Uh, hello, uh, my name is William Hetherington and I'm head of the um, if Cells department at SOAS uh, University of London. And um, this talk is really focusing on our international um, pre-undergraduate foundation programme, um, uh, which uh, we've been running for many years. And, and so um, I'd just like to uh, take you through the structure of my presentation. So first of all, I'm, I just want to tell you a little bit about um, uh, the cells department and um, and the, the the different functions that we have uh, within the university. And then I'd like to talk a little bit and identify some of the strengths of our foundation program. Well, certainly what I see is the strengths of our foundation program. Um, and then moving on more to the, 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 the structure or, and content of the programme itself, both the academic English and the academic uh, modules. Uh, then look a little bit at the workload. Um, so uh, how, how students will structure their week in terms of um, studying on the programme and, um, and the kind of assessment that they have to do. And then uh, finally look, because it's a foundation program and bridging from uh, school, high school generally to undergraduate study, we'll look at the uh, data about how our students have progressed over the last year from the foundation program to a number of uh, universities and the kind of undergraduate programs that they're attending. So we'll start um, just Talking a little bit about um, the if Cells department, uh, we, we run a number of different courses and programmes relating to English language, um, academic study skills and academic study as well, particularly for students who are preparing for degree level study at SOAS or at other universities. So we run the uh, ICC uh, international foundation program that I'm telling you about today. We also run a pre-masters program for students who are preparing for postgraduate study. Uh, we run um, a, a, a predominantly academic English course for exchange students who are coming from different countries to study on campus at SOAS. Uh, we run uh, pre-sessional and in-sessional um, academic English and study skills training as well. I think in terms of all, all of those um, different courses, um, our, our goals are the same. Um, you know, we are, we are trying to provide students with um, an academic study experience. So although we specialize in academic English, uh, many of our programs uh, involve students taking part in academic study, mainly around arts and humanities and social sciences, which really fits in with the uh, subject range of SOAS uh, generally. Um, we're trying to develop students academic um, English, um, but we're also trying to develop students academic study skills. And I think this is a, a very important area for a lot of students. Um, uh, the experience that students have in their own academic culture may be quite different to uh, what they are, how they are expected to participate in um, a UK academic culture. And so developing the right skills that enable students to uh, maximise the progress and the performance that they can achieve is a, a key part of what we're trying to do. Uh, we have um, a subject specialist uh, teachers, um, as well as academic English teachers. So we try and integrate the two parts of the student study. So while students are uh, participating in academic study, in, a, in the study of an academic subject, they have support from a subject um, specialist academic English teacher as well. And we're also trying to um, give students uh, a, a, a whole, a complete campus experience. So all of the study of, of our foundation programme is on campus. Students are taught by 
members of staff from SOAS rather than from a private provider, for example. Um, students have access to all of the facilities that any other SOAS student has. And so part of the preparation for a student is really to immerse themselves in a different kind of academic culture, which they can only really achieve through uh, studying on campus. So in terms of the strengths of the ICC Foundation programme, I think there are quite a few of them really. First of all, um, it's one of the most established um, foundation programmes in the UK and has been running for over 30 years or almost 35 years. Um, and, um, and so uh, uh, we have staff and experience that allows us to really adapt to a range of different student uh, profiles and student experiences. And I think also because the program is so well established, uh, we're also very well recognized around the UK. <clears throat> and so just as, just as an example, so last year when our, when our foundation students applied through UCAS, um, they received offers from 13 of the top 20 universities in the UK. So um, our students, um, even though they're studying on the SOAS programme and maybe a uh, majority of them may, may be attending to go to SOAS, they still have the opportunity of progressing elsewhere. And um, those universities have a clear idea of, of, of the level of performance that our students can achieve and the quality of our students. Uh, we provide our um, students with a, with a range of different subjects that they can study. Uh, quite a lot of other foundation programs tend to channel students into a particular pathway. And um, what we try and do is provide a range of subjects and allow students to choose which subjects they feel would be most suitable for them as preparation, or maybe uh, which subjects they would feel most confident studying or most motivated by and these tend to be um, again around um, arts and humanities, social science and um, business management and some finance as well but I'll talk about that in, uh, in more detail a little bit later. Continuing on with the strengths, uh, we have a very experienced um, teaching staff in our department. Um, the vast majority of the teachers have been teaching in our department for at least 10 years. Uh, some, uh, like myself, have been in the department for nearer 20 years and some have been there for 30 years. So we have a, a staff that have a very good understanding um, of and, uh, and a good sensitivity towards the kinds of experiences, the kinds of challenges um, that um, uh, international students have when they're having to make that transition from uh, their previous educational culture to a new one, studying in a new language, studying new subjects. And so um, that that experience that our staff has is, is invaluable, really, in helping students and supporting students in their journey through the foundation year. Um, as I said before, we try to provide a complete campus experience. Um, all of our teaching is done on campus. Um, in fact, our students are back on campus for term two um, this year. Uh, there's been a mixture of online and on-campus teaching in the first term, but now we are back to uh, complete on-campus teaching. And so that gives students the opportunity really to experience um, a, a UK um, university campus atmosphere and to really take advantage of the resources that are available to them, including the uh, world famous, uh, world leading uh, library, uh, one of five national libraries uh, within the UK, um, getting involved in student union, um, using uh, resources like student support services as well. So, um, and, and also really to meet and interact with other like-minded students on campus and the, and the, and the, 
the campus um, at SOAS is 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 very international. Fifty percent of students are from um, other co countries other than the UK. Um, the students are very passionate about what they're studying, and it really creates an, a very exciting and dynamic atmosphere within the campus. And we want our students to feel part of that. And finally, of course, it's on. Um, it's located. The campus is located in central London, and that gives students the opportunity to um, make the most of all of the sites and um, entertainment and interest and history around central London. So really anywhere in central London is walkable from uh, the uh, Russell Square uh, campus in Bloomsbury. And we are literally a couple of hundred metres away from the British Museum, for example. Um, so there's a there's a um, uh, there, there's a whole range of different uh, things that students can experience outside of the campus as well. OK, now I want to just focus a bit on the uh, general structure of the programme. So our students will take four um, modules. Um, and those are uh, full modules, so they take those four modules for the whole year, for the whole academic year, which runs from September through to uh, June. And, um, and students then get their transcripts and they complete the course in July in preparation to start their undergraduate studies the following September. Um, the four modules, there are two compulsory modules, which obviously students are required to take. One is a, an academic English module, and the other is a kind of foundation academic module called Understanding the Modern World. And then students also take two other modules out of um, a, a range of social science and arts and humanities subjects. They can choose two. Uh, there are some restrictions on choice, um, but 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 generally speaking, students have quite a, a range of subjects that they can choose from. Everything from business, economics, uh, through politics, development studies, law, um, and then into media, uh, world history, world art, and literature. So there's uh, so some students might take two very similar subjects. Some students might take actually take quite different subjects in order to maybe um, uh, increase the range of skills that they develop while they're studying and increase the range of knowledge that they have. But that's very much up to the student to decide and, and very much up to what motivates the student most. So just looking a little bit more in depth at the modules, the academic English module is really um, focusing both on um, writing, literacy and oracy, and uh, it we have two different levels depending on the level of English that the student has when they enter the program. And we are, um, and really the, the, the academic English modules focuses just as much on what we might call academic discourse. So um, uh, how students are expected to use their English in an academic context, how they are expected to present their ideas in writing, um, in a presentation or in interactive discussion. And it's also focusing on critical thinking. So uh, trying to encourage students to get beyond just describing um, uh, what other people have written, describing uh, facts and really engaging in a more evaluative way with the um, concepts, ideas, theories uh, that they are covering um, so that they can start to develop their own ideas. And these additional aspects to the Academic English um, module are, are very, very important in terms of students then being able to apply that to their academic modules. So in terms of the compulsory academic module, Understanding the Modern World, uh, this is a very broad ranging uh, module, really trying to get students to think about how we have got to where we are now, um, as a, um, both in terms of smaller societies, but as a global 
society, really. And so it takes in uh, politics, uh, economics, social issues, history, and really gives students the chance to join up different ideas and different concepts to get a much better understanding of the historical development of societies around the world and how globalization in particular and industrialization and modernization has changed and affected these societies and gives students a chance to think about what's, what might be coming in the future as well. And a lot of what they're studying in this subject will then relate to uh, their uh, or connect with the other more specialist subjects they're studying. So in terms of the academic subjects, we have um, uh, they, they are generally kind of introductory level. I mean, they we don't require students to have had any experience in studying those subjects before. Uh, it's always important that students have a sense of what they are going to study so we make sure that students are provided with a lot of information about these modules uh, before they have to make a choice uh, you don't make a choice of the modules you're studying when you apply you apply for the program itself and then later on nearer to the start of the program we then provide students with information um, uh, access to reading material that they can use in order to make the best choice for themselves so as i said before um, we are going through um, business studies and economics um, economic economics and politics as well um, these are very closely related uh, development studies is a, um, a very central subject to SOAS as, a, as an institution in that SOAS is focusing quite predominantly at degree level on developing regions and the development process. So um, this is a, a very important subject within SOAS generally. <clears throat> um, law and international society uh, rather than a kind of English law or English common law um, uh, focus we're trying to give an international law focus so students can think uh, think more generally about legal concepts and how they might be applied internationally and within particular um, uh, regions as well uh, media and communications again is quite a um, a multidisciplinary subject really trying to get students to think carefully about how media is um, having an increasingly significant effect on how society is shaped, how people gain knowledge, how people interact with each other, like me now. Um, this is all mediated. And so actually media has become a, a really important subject for students to have some awareness of. Um, world history and world, literature, world art and literature are the two kind of Real, real, real pure arts and humanities subjects. Uh, world history is trying to, again, to get students to think, um, I think a, a bit more um, about the, the kinds of uh, concepts, ideologies, uh, philosophies that have, rather than purely looking at historical events, but looking at how, uh, looking historically at how different ideas have um, affected historical, um, developments and have affected societies and regions as well and it really runs from the 15th century right up to the uh, present day and you take as I say it takes a, a global look so it's trying to show how different um, areas of the globe have um, have had varying levels of significance globally at different times in history uh, rather than uh, there is a tendency within uh, universities in the UK to take a rather kind of western centric view of history um, where whereas actually you know Europe in certain certain times in history has been relatively insignificant compared to other regions of the world in terms of global power so it's quite quite important for students to kind of get a sense of uh, um, the subjectivity of history as well how history is an interpretation of evidence um, it's not always fact and it's not always objective um, 
we have to look at evidence and interpret that to develop our own sense of a historical um, development. And finally, world art and literature. These are these are taught, uh, I mean, separately in that we have a world literature term and then a world art term, but we are also trying to look at look at interconnections between the two, particularly in terms of particular movements um, and and how they might have affected artistic expression in both of those uh, subject areas. But also, and as importantly, we are looking at the relationship between um, art and social and political issues around the world as well. So hopefully that kind of gives you a sense of what you might be studying. Um, if you, uh, if, if, if any of you want uh, more information or you're not sure about particular modules, you can always get in contact with me and I can provide you with, with more information about those. So in terms of the working um, uh, week, the studying week, uh, as I said before, there are two elective academic modules, the academic English, uh, there is understanding the modern world and these tend to follow, oh, certainly the academic models tend to follow a similar pattern in that uh, students will have a, a lecture for each of those modules a week and they will have a seminar, a small group seminar tutorial discussion with the lecturer and between those they will have a lecture review with a subject specific English teacher. So uh, students will be following the academic modules with an English teacher who can support them through um, their progression um, within that module, uh, both in terms of helping them understand, uh, get a better understanding of the ideas and concepts that they are, they are addressing, but also looking at how they are then expected to uh, convey information or express their own ideas in a way that's suitable for that particular discipline. So if you're studying development studies compared to, say, uh, world art, uh, you're going to have to express your ideas in um, quite distinct ways. Um, and the kind of evidence that you might be required to use to support the ideas that you are presenting as well. So it focuses on, on that, but so students will get as much support as they will get input from the lecturers themselves. The academic English module is really um, uh, a two hour writing class a week and a one hour oracy class, which focuses predominantly on discussion skills in the first term and presentation skills in the second term. There's also a lot of one-to-one -one support available to students, both in terms of interaction with their lecturers, um, uh, particularly uh, around um, the deadlines for submission of work where they can arrange a one-to-one -one meeting with their lecturer uh, before they submit and then after they submit in order to get face-to-face -face feedback from their lecturers. Um, there's also um, a lot of one-to-one -one support from their uh, academic English um, support teachers and the academic English module teachers as well. There is one-to-one -one support from personal tutors, what we call personal tutors, or uh, sometimes that in the school they're called academic advisors. And we also provide one-to-one -one support for uh, UCAS applications as well. So at the moment, our, the last of our students are submitting their applications um, to be sent um, and submitted later uh, this month. Um, and um, they will be applying both to SOAS and they may well be applying to other universities as well. So it's important that students get support with uh, the writing of personal statements, um, guidance on how to research different programmes, uh, maybe guidance on the difference, difference in approach between different universities as well. In terms of assessment, there are, uh, with the academic uh, modules, there are two termly assignments so uh, one assignment each term so they do two assignments and then there are written exams at the end of the year and um, for um, academic English uh, students develop a portfolio of work and they also have an oral exam 
um, and a written exam at the end of the year. So it's a combination of coursework during the year and then exams. And the split in terms of the mark is really 50-50. So for each of the modules, 50% of the mark is um, accounted for by the um, coursework and 50% is accounted for by the final exams. Okay, so now, now, now let's look at progression uh, before we finish. So um, it's very important that our students have the opportunity to progress to SOAS or to other universities if they choose to do that. So in terms of the data, um, last year our students received offers from 25 different universities. As I said, they received offers from 13 top 20 universities, but 25 UK universities altogether. Um, some students also actually apply to universities abroad um, in America or maybe um, Hong Kong uh, or other universities in mainland Europe. Um, and of uh, and in the end, the students last year have progressed in September, October to 13 different universities and about 80% stayed within the University of London. So that's either staying and progressing to SAS itself, or we had students progressing to um, London School of Economics, um, King's College, uh, Queen Mary University of London, uh, City University and Goldsmiths. And then further afield, we had students um, progressing to Bath University, Bristol, Lancaster, University of the Arts, London, Warwick, Westminster and York. And, and really, they're normally choosing universities on the basis of the strength of the universities in particular areas, in particular subject areas. So to give you a sense of the subjects that students went on to study. Um, here we have um, the SOAS uh, destinations for our students last year, where they are studying this year. And as you see, it's, it's ranging from economics in terms of social sciences, economics, uh, management, law, politics. Um, and then in terms of arts and humanities, we have social anthropology, world philosophies, languages and cultures, and um, history of art. Um, oh wait, no, also I've forgotten international relations. So within the politics department, students can study politics or international relations, or as you can see, both. And you will see that a number of students are taking combined honours subjects. And because SOAS takes quite an interdisciplinary approach to study, the combination, so um, combined honours degrees in two different subjects is quite common. As you can also see, uh, some students are taking languages, so uh, the students taking uh, Japanese there, and uh, is there anyone else? Uh, there's a BA Languages and Cultures and World Philosophies, so that's more, that allows students to study a wider range of languages as well. Now further afield, just to give you a sense of where students have gone further afield, um, again, social science, uh, accounting and finance, um, management, both in terms of general management, but also as you see, University of the Arts is fashion management. Um, we have students going on to um, uh, uh, politics, um, international relations, uh, social science kinds of subject areas and and also uh, media culture. Um, at, at, um, uh, particularly kind of digital culture is becoming uh, much more popular as well. But as you can see, uh, a lot of the time they are focusing on what is regarded as strong subjects in particular universities. So um, at um, uh, for example, yeah, I mean, at, at Lancaster University, accounting and finance is very strong. Obviously, politics at, at the at LSE is um, is one of their main subjects. Warwick, uh, studying management at Warwick. Um, uh, Goldsmiths. In fact, this is unusual because normally students will go to Goldsmiths to do media related subjects. But here we've got management and entrepreneurship and Goldsmiths is quite practical in that way. So as you can see, there's a, a, a range of options open to students in terms of progression to undergraduate study. Um, in terms of progression to SOAS, um, ICC students are uh, 
guaranteed conditional offers for any of the subjects that they um, apply for at SOAS, uh, provided that they meet the January deadline, that initial UCAS deadline, and we, we try and direct students as far as possible to hit the deadline, and um, I think every single student has done that so far. Um, and, um, and as I said before, we do provide one-to-one -one and kind of group guidance through the UCAS process as well. In terms of what students need to achieve, uh, uh, they, they will normally have to uh, hit around about merit level to be able to go to one of the programs at SOAS. It's not normally subject specific, it's more looking at the overall score. So has the student been able to show an overall performance that will um, give the university confidence that they're going to be able to um, progress and make good progress uh, at undergraduate level as well. And then finally, just uh, looking at disc, uh, scholarships and discounts, we do have a small number of uh, international foundation ambassador scholarships. And these are really for students who want to get involved in uh, representing the student body, in presenting uh, to uh, prospective students the student experience at SOAS. And so uh, there is a scholarship of £3,000. Uh, this year, on sorry, next year, there are three scholarships of £3,000. Um, and for that, students are expected to spend one or two hours a, a week um, uh, working on um, trying to help students, help uh, existing students integrate into the student body, but also uh, presenting different parts of the student experience to prospective students through media, through blogs, um, through um, uh, seminars and things like that. So it's really um, uh, it's really ideal for students who enjoy interaction, they enjoy um, meeting people, they have some confidence in being able to present ideas. Um, and um, yeah, and that's been really useful over the last few years to have uh, students who can do that and, and promote the student experience at SOAS. We have early bird discounts, um, so uh, it's fifty. Uh, sorry, it's five hundred pounds off tuition fees if a student accepts their ICC foundation offer by the end of May. And there's also a ten percent progression discount, so students who progress from ICC to uh, an undergraduate subject at SOAS will get a uh, a ten percent discount off tuition fees as well if they progress the following year. Um, good. I think that's that's all that I kind of feel I've covered quite a lot there. If there's anything I haven't covered, then feel free to ask questions now. And um, if not, I've got my email address there, wh2 at soas.ac.uk. So if you want to uh, email me and you want to ask me any questions or you'd like maybe to uh, have a discussion with a current uh, member of the student body, then I'm more than happy to put you in touch with them. So um, I don't know if there are any, any questions. I will um, I'll unshare so we can... Uh, Thanks, William. There's been... Um... There have been sort of two questions that have come in that I can see. Hopefully you can see them on your side as well. Both relating to um, just sort of understanding the difference about the regular sort of foundation year and the ICC programme. Is that something you could touch upon a little bit? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so, so really, the, I mean, one, one difference, but it's not, it's, not, um, it's not exclusively, but, but one difference is, you know, I mean, obviously we're, we're dealing predominantly with international students and the foundation year is dealing predominantly with home students. Um, the foundation year is, is um, to some extent for students who have completed their UK, um, they've graduated from UK high school and they need to do an extra year of study in order to get up to the right academic level to then progress to undergraduate study. Uh, we're dealing predominantly with students maybe who are coming from um, uh, educational structures where it's a requirement for students to do an extra year before they can kind of graduate in a UK sense. So there's there's that side of things. Um, I think the the other main point to make is that the foundation year is um, 
is really focusing on it's it's part of a of a four or five year undergraduate degree so yeah, so if a student joins the foundation year the assumption is that they are going to progress to soas and complete an undergraduate program at soas for the inter, for our international foundation program it's a it's a kind of self contained one year program and then students can then through ucas apply to um, to continue to study at SOAS, or they can apply for other universities in the rest of the UK or the rest of the world. Um, so at the end of the foundation year um, program, there isn't any, students don't get any kind of qualification, they're just finishing the first year of an extended undergraduate degree, whereas at the end of the uh, ICC International Foundation Year students are awarded a certificate which which they, they can then use to progress to other universities if they want to. So uh, so so therefore for um, for uh, the I've got to get this right now. So for foundation year students will apply through UCAS as any undergraduate um, applicant um, but they're applying to take an extra year before they start their undergraduate studies. For ICC, students will be, be applying completely separately. They don't apply through UCAS. And then during the ICC year, they will apply for undergraduate study through UCAS. So I hope that's... Amazing. Uh, I think that's a fantastic answer. Very comprehensively <laughs> covered the difference. It took there? me a while to work out the difference. <laughs> um, um, there's been a question from Alonso there. Can you see that one? Says, yeah, so if you apply for the program, uh, when I uh, program, when will you be expected by the administration body? Is it possible for the applicant, which is to study? It? So I, I'm not, I'm not exactly clear about the first question. Certainly, will it be possible for the applicant, which is an international student, study on the main campus? Yes, absolutely. That's an absolutely central part of the experience. So our students um, are currently studying on campus and as I mentioned in the in the presentation they have the opportunity that really they are so as students and they they ha they have access to all of the facilities that any other degree level so as student has whether that's the the library um, involvement in uh, university uh, sorry in the student union activities student union clubs and societies whether that's use of student support and student advice and well-being all of those things are available to students. Um, but, uh, but the first- I think, I think the first part of the question might be referring to sort of processing times after applications and when you can sort of expect to be hearing back um, from maybe the um, admissions and sort of admin teams who are dealing with, with applications. All right, yeah, so, <clears throat> so basically, yeah, just, in, just generally in terms of the application process, as I said, is one of the differences between foundation year and, the, and this, ICC International Foundation is that uh, students will be applying for the found for the ICC Foundation separately, uh, kind of you know not part of the UCAS process. So once we receive the application, um, it, normally the, normally the, I'd say the turnaround is a matter of days, unless we would like. In some cases, we like to maybe consult with the applicant. Um, if there's something that is unclear about their application, or maybe in terms of their study plan, if we feel that their study, if 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 we're not sure whether our program is going to fit the student study plan, then we will normally get in touch with the student and arrange a kind of informal discussion. So um, you know, maybe maybe twenty percent, twenty five percent of students will kind of get in contact with just to have more of a discussion. It's not a test or anything. It's just really for us to make sure that our, you know, because once a student is on a foundation program and this is kind of bridging them to degree level study, it's really important that they are really clear about what their options are. And they are also really clear about, about what they might not be able to achieve on a particular foundation program because we don't want students we want students to come onto the program with a very clear idea of what they can achieve and where they might be able to progress 
um, uh, rather than coming in thinking that they can use a foundation program to kind of go anywhere and study anything. Most foundation programs are not like that. I mean, there are kind of rules and regulations and quality control and students have to meet requirements. So, so yeah, so that's a very long winded answer to your question, maybe. So uh, it's really just uh, a matter of days. If everything is clear, if the personal statement is strong, if it, if it looks like they are going to meet the academic conditions, then they'll get an offer in a matter of days. Or in a matter of days, they will get contact probably from me to um, to be invited for a, just a, a, um, a discussion about an aspect of their application, just so we're clear before we make the decision. Brilliant. Um, we do still have a couple of moments. So if anyone would like to put another question in, do feel free. While we yeah, wait for that, William, something you touched upon there. Oh, actually, one's just come through. Can you see that in the Q&A? From Christina. Um, for instance, from a tumor, seems what's the process to transfer credits from U E system to um, would it be possible to join in the second year? If so, uh, uh, it's I don't I mean um, I don't know whether this is more of a kind of undergraduate question than a foundation question. I think sometimes um, trans progression to second year. I think. I mean, Dan, you might have a better idea, but progression to second year is often quite difficult because um, the because of the way that um, uh, prog uh, undergraduate programs are structured, uh, the the second year often follows quite is quite closely connected to what students have studied in the first year. So if they haven't studied what they needed to have studied in the first year really to get the most from the second year then um, it, it causes problems so uh, I don't know whether it's purely down to credits it might also be down to um, the uh, admissions tutor in the politics department looking at the modules that a student is studying and checking that they cover what would be studied in the first year of an international relations program is that right yeah exactly that william so um christina you might find it helpful to because unfortunately there's not just one answer to, to your question it's quite um dependent on the circumstances and the situations what the exact course you're studying at the moment is like and the program you want to go on to as well and you know how closely they align I'd recommend that you send an email to our um, study inbox. So the email address is study, S-T-U-D-Y, at soas.ac.uk. I'll pop it into the chat now as well. So that's a general email address for sort of any of those kind of questions. Um, and someone within the team will be able to get back to you and speak to you a little bit further about that one. And a question from Alonzo there, William. Oh, have I missed that one then? Uh, oh, sorry, in QA, sorry, um, the program, but, but it was telling me the first language, so can I forsake that? Um, 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 well, there, there's there's kind of two two answers to that, that really. Um, the first is that, that the English language, in, 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 in a sense, students are having to satisfy two different requirements. There's the, there's the requirement for the program, um, and there's the requirement for the visa. And, um, and what's happened really, because the visa requirements have, have become um, slightly more strict over the years, um, a, lot of, a lot of universities really align their requirements to what's required for the visa. So uh, regardless, of, uh, regardless of whether you come from a country where English is your first language or not, if you are applying for a foundation level um, program and this is the international foundation rather than the foundation year that the UK foundation year that I was talking about before. But if you if you're if you if you're progressing at foundation level and you need a visa for a foundation level program, a one year foundation level program, then you will have to, in terms of the visa, show um, the appropriate level of English. Uh, you, you can't just say, I come from a, a country where English is the first language, uh, unless there, there are a few exceptions to that. There are a few exceptions to that, but for the majority of students, they will have to provide a UKVI approved secure English language test, SELT, S-E-L-T, which is what it's sometimes called. So that could be an IELTS test, 
uh, but it has to be UK VI approved. Or it, could, it could be UK VI Pearson as well. Um, but uh, it, but it's more to do with satisfying the visa requirement than satisfying the requirements for the program. I think if somebody's coming from a country where English is the first language, then we would obviously take that into account in terms of the requirements for the program itself, but they still have to satisfy the visa requirements. So that's really where the English certificate comes in and students do, generally speaking, have to provide um, some kind of UK VI approved. And UK VI is the, is the visa um, board within, uh, agency within the UK. So UK VI approved, uh, and that's all on the website. It, uh, that's all on the SOAS website. If you go to the SOAS website about English language requirements, there's a lot of information about that there. But it's an important question because I think sometimes it can be quite confusing for, for, for applicants to know whether they should um, provide one or not, whether it needs to be UK VI approved or not. Um, the best thing is playing safe is uh, to get a UK VI approved IELTS or Pearson test. Um, and, uh, uh, and, and actually the level of English that's required for the, for the visa is actually relatively low compared to what is required for the program itself. So, um, so, so normally the, the visa will just require a student to get around, around, around well, the, I think what you what you need to do is to aim to get an IELTS score of a 5.5 um, through a UK VI approved IELTS test. That's the simplest way to do it. I think. Anyway, I think we're kind of running late, so we might have to finish there. Is that right, Dan? That's that's fantastic. I'm just popping quickly that uh, web link as well that you mentioned into the chat for everyone about English language requirements in case they'd like to take that away um, for a little bit of further reading, because it can sometimes be a little bit complicated to get your head around, can't it, William? Very complicated. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we're, we're getting there, though, aren't we? Um, yeah. yeah. Thank but, you so much. As I said, for... as I said, uh, yeah, as I said before, if any, if any of you if any of you have any uh, questions, um, you can always feel free to email me wh2 at soas.ac.uk. And, um, uh, you know, whether it's about specifically about the programme or whether it's more generally about studying in the UK, I'm perfectly happy to answer questions because I think all of those, you know, making sure that students have a really clear, complete knowledge of, of what it's like to study in the UK is, is really important. So it's an open invitation. Fantastic. Thanks, William. Uh, thank you to everyone for, for joining us today. That does bring us to the end thank of the session. You, yeah. Um, the recording will be made available as well to anyone who wants to watch this back if you join partway through or, or missed any of it. So thank you all very much. And just remember in the chat, there are a couple of key links and email addresses in case you need to get in touch with us um, after the session. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.